interested in return five returning starters and just what that feels like and what camp has been like for you so far. Yeah, a lot, a lot of starts in that room, a lot of maturity, a lot of guys that have seen, you know, the ups and the trends of this program. Uh, they, they've heard from a lot of different coaches, you know. Um, so just speaking their language and, and working on that, building our calls, different things up front. Uh, it's easier when you have those guys who have experienced change before. Um, and, and, you know, you, you got a lot of starts in there, the Cunninghams, the Wagners, the Clarys, there, there's been Schombergs, there's guys that seen been – in a lot of games, a lot of snaps. Uh, and that experience just breeds confidence, you know, and they're able to see those situations that arise almost before they do it. And uh, it's a lot of fun coaching them. We've got a great room right there. And uh, I wake up every day blessed to, blessed to be here, blessed to be coaching them. Coach, I'm curious about the battle at left guard with Brady and, and Luke. How do you see that competition right now? And what would each guy bring, you know, skill set wise if they started? Uh, yeah, it's going to be down to the wire, I'll be honest with you, and it's not one of those bad down to the wires either. They're scrapping every day. Uh, they know what's at stake. I'm not really uh, – it, it's not a secret in our room that there's a competition there. And, you know, great great programs, great teams are around. That That's the cornerstone of it is competition within those position groups. And uh, those two guys are, are great kids that come up to work every day. Uh, with Luke, you're going to get a, a, a bigger kid. You know, Brady's been putting on weight and done a great job getting up to over 300 pounds now. Uh, but Luke's a little bit of a bigger kid, sturdier kid. Uh, Brady, you're going to get, you know, a, a very fiery young man who, who's going to go at it every day. Uh, so, I mean, it's going to come down to the wire, but it's not a, oh, man, who are we going to put out there, you know, with dread. Uh, I, I'm excited to see how those guys play out. And obviously, they're attacking each day and, and doing a good job. Coach, one, how is Crawford coming along? And then second, what's your philosophy on playing? How many how many offensive linemen in a perfect in a perfect world in a game do you like to play? Yeah, like more like just a regular game. Absolutely. First question there on uh, Tyke Crawford, uh, young man that's came into our program as a transfer. He's getting better every single day. Uh, every single day he does something. I'm like, hmm, man, lights turning on, you know, and, and we're doing some good things. Uh, or he's doing some good things, showing up to work every day, showing up to the meeting room, learning our schemes, um, you know, which he's been a part of some other schemes as well. Uh, so learning the language for him, learning the calls uh, within our offense, he, he, he wakes up every day and, and is striding towards getting better every day, which is what you want. Uh, and then the second question, as far as O-line rotation, uh, I, I think you got to get the best five out there to start, but everybody in the country is looking for 10 really, really good offensive linemen. Uh, there's not a program in the country that is just overrun with great offensive linemen. Uh, you know, that's why recruiting is, is huge. Uh, but also, as far as my personal philosophy, I think you've got to got to have guys that you trust on that second wave, uh, about eight guys that if something happens, you know, in a game, you can't control the variables that are out there. If something happens, I don't want my heart rate to go up because somebody's out there. So we're working every day with, with combo um, combo line, what we call combo lines in practice, where we're mixing up guys where, hey, if X, Y, Z goes down, who's going in? Okay, he may play right tackle right now. He may move the left guard. Uh, and and it's really, it really helps the kids with confidence too, uh, because if you get throughout the season and there's some of those circumstances that come up, the kids aren't doubting their sales. Uh, they've been in that situation in practice. Uh, so I'd say you got to have eight solid ones that you believe in, but Heck, everybody in the country will take 10 to 12 for sure. Coach, if you, uh, if, if Stromberg couldn't go, then obviously Ty Clary is your backup center and working right guard. And uh, Coach, so how is he doing also at center? And Coach Pittman mentioned the other day that Latham also might be the backup left tackle mm -hmm. uh, in addition to, to playing left guard. Could you yeah, that's those? part of some of those combo periods we're going through. You know, we'll, we'll go through the ones, twos, and threes, and then we'll have a, have a rack of plays uh, where those situations arise. Uh, Ty Clary moving to center, for instance. Um, you know, Brady Latham moving to one of the tackles. Okay, there's some different – St. John moving inside. Uh, those situations all arise, and it's all just to prep our players with confidence. Uh, and, and so don't be surprised if you look up and you see some practice clips, something like that, somebody's playing differently. We're just trying to prepare those young men and uh, make sure it's not a, oh, man, I hope they don't put me in here. Uh, but more of a, oh, yeah, that was – Second week of camp, I was right there. Let's go. Let's make this call and let's execute the play. 
Obviously, you want Ricky back as soon as you can get him. But how, how's Ty doing at center? He's, he's played there before, but obviously, he yeah, absolutely. He's had a pass here playing center, uh, doing a good job building confidence. It, it, in the long term, it's going to really help our offensive line. Okay, uh, and especially with Coach Pittman, obviously with his offensive line background, he's always on me with how many guys you got can snap the ball. Because obviously you can't operate his offensive line if you don't have a center. Uh, so we're trying to be deep at that position. So that's only in increasing our depth. And he's doing a really good job. Obviously he's a senior, so he's got uh, respect in the room, uh, you know, from the other guys uh, and, and doing some things or an older guy that has respect. So him moving in there, he's able to make calls. He, he's, he's coming along every day. Um, you know, do, do I see him moving back to guard once Rick gets back there? Absolutely. Okay. But, uh, you know, he, he's doing a great job and it's only going to help us in the long term. And you, you obviously have an offensive line background, but you were coaching tight ends and then in June, you, you, you switched back over to the line. That's kind of an odd time. Just uh, what's that transition been like for you? Yeah, I, I've grown a lot as a coach, you know, being a young guy, uh, obviously you wouldn't script it, uh, but opportunity great opportunities aren't ever scripted uh you know you, you don't get to choose those on your own time uh so you know I showed up to work and we moved you know shuffled up and I, I've coached offensive line my whole career uh and, and I feel really strongly with uh you know meeting with guys and and learning my way of communicating uh I, I feel like we're building every day and I feel really strongly about that so I I feel like we're heading in a good direction Cody, one of the most intriguing positions on this team is D-line. As Sam has said, got to get deeper, got to get better. You go against them every day. What, what are you seeing out of that group? Who, who's rising up? They've done it. Uh, they, they've checked the box. Uh, you know, with the grad transfers that have come in, uh, Ridgeway, Williams. Um, you know, I, I don't want to leave guys out because, heck, they're, they're shuffling them in there and they're rolling. Uh, some, some guys that were – higher up in the depth chart in the spring, you know, there's a lot of competition right there. And they're able to skate guys on ones and twos pretty seamlessly. And, uh, but you know, ha have a lot of threat out there. I, I think, you know, with, with the big man Ridge in the middle, uh, that's what we needed. Uh, we went out and were able to secure that. And then obviously we want to get to the edge and, and rush the passer. And I, I think there's a different look there too. I, I think we've checked the box. I don't want to leave any of those guys out. You know, obviously we've got some guys that have been here that are, that are flashing too, the Geralds, those type guys uh, that, that are flashing. And uh, so, man, it, it, it's impressive and it helps us. Um, obviously, with the, with the various looks, uh, Coach Totem puts them in and uh, they're able to get, get after the passer and, and, and give me a little, little bit of heartburn when I go to bed at night. So, uh, you know, they, they, they've checked the box. Coach, I know you weren't here whenever Clay was a center in the past, but something he struggled with was maybe snap consistency. How is he handling that aspect of the position since he's moved over there? I'll be honest with you. When it first happened, uh, you know, it was kind of a um, everybody assumed kind of between him and Shane, they were going to take snaps right there. So you moved Ty over and the first couple of days, it got to him a little bit, but like with anything, you know, you settle into it and uh, you're able to build that consistency with it. And, you know, I've, I've snapped the ball, you know, and, and played that. It's not near as easy as what you think. It's really cool when you can sit out there in pregame and snap it when you don't have a 300-pound guy in front of you. But uh, it, when we're able to simulate that in practice, his consistency has gone up. And, uh, you know, early on in camp, I'd say, yeah, you know, there were some consistency issues. But just like anything, he's built on it. And uh, I feel really confident in him right now. A great young man, too, willing to do anything for the University of Arkansas. This is the type of kids we need in this program. On Saturday, there was a little bit of a pass pro, some issues, maybe communication. I'm just wondering from your vantage point what you saw. Yeah, there. I, I think when you move some guys, you're going to have a little bit of growing pains there, like in our combo, uh, combo situations. Uh, so guys playing new positions. And, you know, obviously the talent over there has gotten better. Uh, you, you can't sit here and say, oh, man, this, this, and this. They've gotten better over there. Um, and uh, Coach Ashley's doing a great job coaching those guys up. And, um, you know, our biggest thing in pass protection is our communication and, and being comfortable communicating. And sometimes when you shift guys around in different situations, you, uh, you know, you, you drop in that area of communication. But I think it's good for those guys to learn it when we don't have a scoreboard turned on. And uh, I, I think they're only going to grow from it and um, communicating and speaking the same language.
Yeah, Coach, uh, I was wondering if you could tell us about the progress of a couple of second-year guys, uh, Marcus Henderson, Ray Curry Jr., and uh, Jalen St. John, how those guys were dressing. Yeah, start with St. John. He's uh, he's out there at tackle uh, and doing a doing a good job. Um, you know, he he's going into his role as a tackle, being of a set with those edge rushers. He is a bigger guy, uh, but he's learning his set and maturing with that. Uh, you got Marcus Henderson, who's been uh, been over at right tackle, uh, doing a doing a good job. Big athletic guy, okay, more of an athletic, um, you know, size tackle. Him and St. John kind of contrast a little bit, and you see that in body styles. Um, and, and then you got Ray Curry, who's coming along there, and uh, he's getting better every day. Just understanding what we're doing from an offensive perspective, so he, he's uh, he's continued to progress. What you've seen out of Bo Limmer and Dalton Wagner through 10 practices so far? Yeah, I, I really enjoy coaching both of those guys. Uh, you know, Bo's, Bo's kind of a no-nonsense guy, go get to work. And uh, there, there's merit to that. I, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, he shows up every day. You're not going to hear much out of him. you got to ask him the questions in the meeting room, and, and he gets them right. Uh, so I, I let him roll. He's, uh, you know, but – I really enjoy coaching him. And then Dalton, I mean, he's the, he's the old man of the room. You know, he uh, he keeps us laughing in there. And uh, he, he's a really sharp guy that, honestly, I think if you look at the room, you take him as a freshman versus what he is now, uh, he, he's grown leaps and bounds, uh, not only from a personality and leadership perspective, but also a player. And uh, the situations he's seen throughout his years, now he's building that confidence and he's playing – playing fast and doing some really good things. I, I, I really think those two guys are doing really, really well. Cody, what, what kind of camp is Myron Cunningham having and what are your expectations for him? Yeah, you know, Myron's coming back uh, in that super senior category. You're, you know, Myron brings that leadership, uh, kind of calm demeanor at times. And uh, that's good for the offensive line, you know, at times. Uh, we're all running off the ball, striking people every play. Uh, it's good to have an old head out there saying, hey, guys, we got to make this call right here. And uh, I, I think he's coming back, and uh, he he knows how valuable he is to our offensive line, and I think that's, you know, built up his confidence as well. And uh, he, he's doing some, doing some good things. Uh, obviously, he's getting new tests in pass protection, which is great for him. You know, he's got guys pushing, pushing, pushing him every day in practice to get better. Uh, on that edge with, with seeing different rushes and and um, different types of speed out there. So it, it's been it's been a really good camp for him. I know that's obviously good players at every level, but Ridgeway did when you're watching film, you think, wow, this guy was at Illinois State. He was playing, you know, one double A or what I mean, what, what what do you think about him? That yeah, don't, don't knock it. There's good players at every level now. Uh, you, you look, you're looking at one that coast coast them all over. And, uh, you know, I've been on some Division two teams that had a lot of really, really good players. Uh, so, you know, everybody's got their own story. Everybody's got their own way of developing. And uh, there, there's good players coming from, from all the levels. And obviously, we, we've got a really good one right there uh, who helps shore up some things in the middle. And uh, he makes our guys better, man. It's, it's an iron sharpens iron mentality. I know that sounds kind of cliche, but that is really what has happened here. We've gone out and, and signed some guys that help us on that defensive side of the ball. And there's some different battles going on in camp that weren't there in the spring that I think help us. A lot. Don't make a decision on Saturday, or maybe let him recuperate more. Yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna let him progress back. Uh, Ricky's gonna be Ricky's gonna be back with us here shortly. Uh, you know, I, I went to school for uh, physical education, so I, I let the doctor people handle all that stuff out, and uh, I go with what they say. But he'll be back uh, rather shortly here with us, and. Uh, He'll be ready to rock and roll. He's been going through some walkthrough stuff and uh, and sharpening the blade mentally, and uh, just had a little hiccup right there. And he'll be he'll be back to it. Absolutely appreciate you guys.